fasting, you mentioned about fasting. I was there's 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 a lot of conversation around about this, and yeah. and I'm a little bit confused. I've tried different things myself. Yeah. Um, I, I, the, the first question is is really about intermittent fasting, mm. and you, you mentioned uh, that you're not really getting. Um, you're not really getting a lot of benefits until you've got rid of your glycogen. So yeah. what, what, what's your views on intermittent fasting? When is it relevant, if at all? And, and how would you, um, you know, how, how would that link into if you wanted to actually train to build muscle? Well, uh, that's a good question because recent studies, uh, when the intermittent fasting first became popular, a couple of studies showed that only certain forms of intermittent fasting, meaning the longer forms, the ones that were on, let's say, more than a day or two, they were definitely adverse uh, as far as building muscle. They tended to produce catabolic effects in muscle. Uh, there was one called a time uh, framed, uh, I, I think, I can't remember the exact term. It's where you only eat within a certain time frame, mm -hmm. let's say between seven. Time eight, restricted. Time restricted, yeah. that's it. Time restricted. That one originally was found to be the best for somebody that wanted to build muscle. Unfortunately, another study came out recently showed that that also can interfere with muscle gains. So, you know, there's a little bit of a problem with that. Uh, I, I, I kind of like have a little bit of doubts about that because if you follow a, let's say, 16-hour intermittent fast... I do a 16-8 just that's because good, it's convenient. Yeah. That's and... fine. That's fine. But in other words, as long as you get a good amount of protein within a short time of breaking the fast... I don't think you're going to have major catabolic. I think it's nonsensical. I think it's bull. I don't believe that for a second. Now, you're not again. You're not going to get the major autophagy effect unless you do it for more than a, at least a day, maybe two days. Uh, again, you got to exhaust all the glycogen to get into that. Uh, you got to get, release this stuff called AMPK. It's involved in that that stimulates autophagy. But uh, a short-term uh, uh, intermittent fast, <clears throat> for some reason, even if you do like you're doing. Is really good for the immune system. Really? It kind of resets it. So, you know, that alone makes it worthwhile. Uh, the, uh, a lot of people will use intermittent fasting as a means of weight loss. Now, recent studies that compared intermittent fasting to your, let's say, normal calorie counting showed no difference. In other words, it's the same rate of weight loss. Why? Because a lot of people will go on a fast, and when they break the fast... <laughs> they pile the food in, so they're winding up getting the same amount of calories, yeah. even though they've restricted some calories by the fasting, by loading up on the food afterwards, in the long run, they're getting the same amount of calories as a low-calorie diet, so they're in the same boat. Yeah. You know, so the, so, but it's, it's a good thing. I, I generally think that, uh, that it's, it's, a, it's, 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 good for, it's good for health. Uh, some, some earlier studies showed that intermittent fasting could provide up to 90% of the health benefits of what they call calorie restriction eating. Calorie restriction involves reducing your daily caloric intake by 30, average of 30%. Now that's a lot. And animals ranging from mice to rats to fish to dogs to even monkeys, they showed that calorie restriction tended to produce a life extension effect. Uh, uh, a couple of humans have, there's no human evidence, you have to understand. To get human evidence, you'd have to follow a person their entire lifespan. No, that would be a, a study. That would be the mother of all studies from an expense. <laughs> Even Elon Musk would back off on that one. And that's how expensive that would be. And nobody's going to do it anyway. But the point being that uh, uh, you know, there's not there's not a lot of evidence that it'll do that uh, ex and extend life. But the point is that they found that following a uh, intermittent fasting does provide. A lot of the benefits of caloric restriction, uh, because again, effect on the immune system, uh, does have a good effect on lowering resting insulin levels, lowering glucose levels. These are all related to increased longevity. So in other words, if you're interested in, let's say, long-term health, intermittent fasting is still a good idea. Mm. Just don't depend on it for fat loss. It's not the greatest fat loss thing. Right. So, so muscle building then, because I guess, and we're going into a few different areas now, but I guess muscle building generally probably isn't something for longevity. Like you don't actually need a lot of big muscle if oh, you no. want to live a long time. So no. are those two things, so if you, if you do want to do intermittent, is it negative to muscle building? Or if, you know, providing you don't do it for extended periods, you can still maintain, even as you get a little bit older, a certain amount I think of muscle you, I, I think you could maintain. 
But I just want to comment on what you just said about the large muscles as you get older. The big problem with that is, a, again, remember I, I mentioned that, su that substance earlier called mTOR, the mammalian target of rapamycin? If there's a problem when people age, there's a balance between mTOR and this stuff called AMPK. Now remember I mentioned autophagy, which is a very healthy process where your body gets rid of old cells. It's definitely related to longevity. AMPK stimulates autophagy. mTOR blocks it. And the problem is as mm. people age, mTOR gets out of balance. How does that happen then? It just, it just it, nobody really knows. It just, it just your, your body just produces, it, uh, tends to produce less AMPK to balance out the mTOR, and the mTOR tends to get out of balance. Uh, so, what's, so if you have too much mTOR, is that a bad thing? Very bad, because it stimulates, not only does it cause more rapid aging, it stimulates cancer and cardiovascular disease and brain degeneration. Right. So it's very bad. Now, imagine a guy, let's say 50, 60 years old, still involved in bodybuilding, uh, you know, he might be having a, a rise in mTOR and he's taking amino acids, which stimulate mTOR. He's, uh, he's involved in weight training, which stimulates mTOR. And maybe he's even taking testosterone, which also stimulates <laughs> mTOR. So there's a real problem there. They say, well, is that a dead man walking? No, <laughs> there's things you could do about it. Very simple. What you do to counter mTOR is raise AMPK. There's a lot yeah, of nutritional go. supplements can do that. And guess what? When you do aerobic exercise, AMPK goes right up. Really? Right up. When you take mm. in, uh, uh, if you take in carbohydrates, uh, right, let's say after your workout, M M -A -M -P AMPK rises. If you take sub substances like green tea, certain other substances, AMPK rises. So if, if <clears throat> I'm just going to do a visual. So, so let's say you're... So let's say you're 60, okay, yeah. and, to, and you are doing weight lifting. You want to maintain a certain amount of muscle mass, which is good, I guess. Right, sure. And you've got you've got like mTOR up here yeah. and M AMK there. Mm -hmm. So if you let's say you do some cardiovascular stuff, does that sort of d does that push this up and then M so so you, you're kind of raising both levels, right? Um, well, the protein, will, the weight training will raise uh, mTOR, mTOR, and protein will raise it. The uh, aerobics will raise AMPK. Okay, all right. So, but if if let's say you weren't doing that, you've got a certain. So, so what are you? Are you is it kind of like? I'm trying to sort of explain this, but are you? Is the goal even if you've got a reasonably high level of mTOR through weight lifting uh, and testosterone? Is the goal to really boost the AMPK yes. above that, which can be done, or, or to to offset that, right. which can be done through other ways yes, that's to balance wanna, it out. That's the key, you okay. wanna balance it. You don't necessarily have to have a, a super high AMPK because AMPK blocks muscle protein synthesis. <laughs> which so is what happens when you're younger then? Like, are, are you, do you have both those things in balance? Yeah, you tend to be automatically in balance. You don't have to worry about it. It right. only rises with age. I'm not really sure why, but it rises with M age. mTOR, that yeah. is. Now, an interesting uh, side note to this is the only drug thus far produced which is known to extend lifespan even in middle-aged people. Now, you have to understand, I mentioned calorie restriction increasing the lifespan of animals. Very bad, sad fact about that is for that to happen in humans, you'd have to start it in infancy. And that, that would cause growth retardation. No, no one in their right mind is going to do that. Mm. But they discovered a drug that actually you could start at 40 or 50 years old and it will work, it will actually lower M mTOR, and by doing so, it extends lifespan. It's pretty certain that it does. It's called rapamycin. Mm -hmm. Rapamycin was discovered, it's called rapamycin because the, the native name of Easter Island is rapamimui or something like that. And this stuff was discovered in the, uh, it was like a fungus growing in the soil on Easter Island. They isolated this stuff, made it into a drug called rapamycin, Rapamycin is used medically as an immunosuppressant. They give it to people who have kidney uh, transplants to prevent the rejection of the kidney because it downgrades your immune system. But it also inhibits mTOR. So a lot of people right now are taking, including some of the people that you've seen on these videos, uh, you know, they're taking smaller doses, maybe six milligrams of rapamycin twice a week in the hopes of, and these are older guys, of getting the life extension benefits. Now, I thought about that myself. In fact, I read of a study where when they give it to dogs, 
it extends the lifespan of dogs an average of three to four years. And I said, gee, I got to get a hold and give it to my dog. <laughs> he you gets know? some doggy, doggy, doggy gummies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's an actual ongoing study where they're giving rapamycin to dogs. It's going on even as we speak. But anyway, uh, the thing is, I thought about it. And then I said to myself, I, I looked at the side effects. First of all, it's an Im immunosuppressant is rapamycin, right? Mm. And then I, even with the small doses, in this age of COVID, you know, and all these people walking around with diseases, do you really want to take something that's going to depress your immune system? No, I'm, I don't think so. So I, I chose not to take rapamycin. My technique is to do exactly what I said earlier, to try and alternate raising my AMPK. AMPK. And at other times when I want to maintain the muscle, I raise my mTOR. I do that by taking amino acids, protein, and weight training. And, and do you, is, this some, is this a balance that you do like on a daily basis? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't consciously say, well, well now I'm going to do... Uh, at three o'clock, I'm going to take my brain. No. no, it's just a, a natural. Also, I take a drug called metformin, which is used for prediabetes. Uh, it also happens to be a very potent AMPK stimulator. That alone, if, if, even if I did nothing else, that would raise my AMPK. Unfortunately, because it raises AMPK, it also interferes with muscle gains. A lot of people will tell you, don't take metformin on the days you work out because it's going to block your muscle gains. So how do you, how do you sort of balance those <coughs> two? Because it's, it sounds like it's quite complicated. To, like, is there a general rule of thumb that you can... Because obviously you want the mTOR because yeah. you want to build it, but you yeah. don't want too much and right. you want the AMPK to keep it under control yeah. without some sort of sophisticated measurement tool. How, how, do you, how do you figure that out? Well, what I do these days is I focus on basically trying to boost AMPK a little bit more than mTOR. In other words, I take in protein, I work out with weights, but at this stage of the game, I'm not concerned with trying to build 20-inch arms or anything like that. I'm more interested in health and longevity, and if, I, and if raising AMPK will tend to promote that, that's what I'm going to focus on. If I was younger, I would probably be the opposite, meaning I would definitely, let's say I was in my 20s, early 30s, then the, uh, I would reverse the focus, now it would be on mTOR, I wouldn't even be concerned about AMPK. It's only when you get older that so you So what have, sort of age are we talking? About 40s, I'd say well, I, a little older than that, about 50, 50, 50 right. 55. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm, so when I work out, I'll do, um, I, I kind of always start my workout with a, with a bit of like a run. I like mm -hmm. running outside, not too long, but 20 minutes cardio, and then I'll do my weights. And mm -hmm. I know probably not the right way of doing it. But um, when I'm doing my cardio, is that sort of something, is that raising my AMPK? And yeah. then when I'm doing my weights, I'm, I'm sort of... It is raising your AMK, AMPK, but, but uh, uh, I don't think it's going to really interfere that much with, uh, with, the, with the gains. Because as soon as you start, as soon as you start to lift the weights, the, it's going to reverse. But will that, balance, will that help to sort of balance it? Yeah, it would. If I didn't do any... Yeah, no, it, it would definitely help to balance it. Uh, but as soon as you start to lift the weights, you're going to get the message. Your body's going to send out a signal to boost the air because you're, you're, you know, you're, you're basically working your muscles. You'll get a kind of signal to, to kick out mTOR. mTOR. Yeah, so there'll be no pro there's no real problem. The biggest problem with doing aerobics prior to resistance training is that if you do it too much, let's say you do an hour, you're going to exhaust the glycogen that should be po because you have to understand. Resistance exercise, the number one fuel is muscle glycogen. Mm -hmm. You know, you might have heard the term hitting the wall. You know, some of these runners, long distance, when the glycogen <laughs> runs out, they, you know, they, they, they're like, they, they can't even move. The muscles seize up, basically. Yeah. I mean, it never happens with weight training, but still. In other words, the, the only problem I see with doing aerobics first is that, you know, you'll be using some of the glycogen that might be used in the resistance. That's the only problem. Right. But is, but I, but, is, as a as a simple kind of takeaway from this, particularly as me, as I'm in my sort of mid fifties almost, um, do some cardio because yeah. that's going to assist with the AMPK. That's right. Um, do your strength training and everything else. And is there any other supplementation to, you know, for that AMPK as well? Because it seems as though if you're taking protein and amino yeah. acids and working out. You've you've got your mTOR yeah. figured out. Yeah, there's a couple of them. Like I said, green tea, green tea, curcumin. Uh, 
it's a couple of them, I can't remember them offhand. There's about 10 of them right. that actually will raise AMPK. I don't remember, those okay. are the only two I remember up here. And then coming back to the original thing, which was fasting then, and, and so does the, does the uh, intermittent or, or any kind of fasting, does that also put up the M AMPK, which helps with autophagy? Yeah. It does. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that is one of the advantages. So if you did, if you did say once a month, a uh, 48, 24 hour fast, that that is would be also very good. Good. Yeah, I know. Uh, there's a, uh, uh, I think his name is Vincent Longo. He's a re uh, longevity researcher at USC. Uh, I think he said once or twice a year, he goes on a five day fast. Wow. Doesn't eat anything for five days. Just drinks water. I guess it is or tea or something. Uh, now that is definitely catabolic. That's tough, right? That's and you know, if you look at the guy, he doesn't have much money. You know, I mean, he's a, he's a scarecrow. The guy has like you know, he's like one of these sticks over here. You know, he's not interested in muscle. So as, I wouldn't recommend that for anyone who wants to maintain muscle. But one thing I want to quickly add before I forget, you mentioned about having larger muscles with age, not necessarily larger muscles, but you want to maintain as much muscle as possible because there's been a slew of studies recently showing that losing muscle. It's a condition called sarcopenia. When you lose muscle with age, has a direct relationship with increased mortality. Meaning, the more muscle you lose and the faster you lose it, the faster you're going to die. So, what that boils down to, uh, from a uh, practical uh, sense, uh, is that people that don't engage in some form of resistance exercise already have one foot in the grave. Seriously, I mean, I'm not saying you have to go to the gym and work out three hours a day. But you got to do some form of resistant training to maintain muscle mass. Mm -hmm. Can't do it with aerobics. It has to be resistant training. Everybody, man, woman, I don't care who you are. If you're past forty, if you want to live, you know, live as, assuming you're doing everything right, you're not smoking cigarettes and eating a lot of garbage. You know, you have to do some sort of resistance training. You really do. It's absolutely essential. They know. They know. They now know that. See, yeah. in the past, you have to understand. They downplayed resistance. They said, aerobic exercise. Forget resistance. Ah, you don't need resistance. You got to do aerobic exercise to maintain your cardiovascular system if you want to live long. And, because cardiovascular disease is the number one killer. And they play down resistance training. Now they know they're equally important. You need both. Mm. That's what the new research shows. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. With, um, <clears throat> with, with the fasting <clears throat> and... Um, the, you know, there's there's obviously going to be some muscle loss um, as a result of it. Mm -hmm. there, and, and and earlier you talked about these um, these um, satellite cells, was right? That, yeah, stem cells, uh, muscle stem cells. Yeah. Was yeah? Was it what they, did you call them? What they called satellite cells? Satellite cells. Yeah. Satellite cells. Right. So, with did if you um, so say for example you fast for a long time, are you actually losing those, mm -hmm. and or do they rebuild again? Or like, so when you, when you lose muscle, what, what is it that you're actually losing? Are you losing fibers? Are you losing like mass to the muscle? And, and if you lose it, can you put it, can you put it back again? Yeah, there's, there's probably a, a loss of activity of satellite cells, right. which will you know, eventually equal muscle loss. And also there's a uh, atrophy of the muscle fibers itself from that, you know, because uh, it's a use it or lose it uh, system. If you don't use the muscle, uh, you lose it. Uh, it just basically fades away. That's right. the way muscle is. Body's a machine from head to toe, works on a use it or lose it basis. Uh, whatever you don't use, you lose, including brain cells. People that don't read, don't stimulate their brain, chests or whatever, they will lose their brain eventually. You know, they're going to show much more brain degeneration than somebody comparatively who stimulates their brain. And I'm not talking about those brain games. I'm talking about stuff that you really... Learning new things, like learning a new language, learning a, uh, how to play a musical instrument. This is, like, this is like muscle building for the brain because it stimulates. You heard this saying about losing brain cells. Well, now they know that that's kind of been exaggerated. Yes, you lose brain cells as you age, but they found that in the area related to memory of intelligence, an area of the brain called the hippocampus, you can actually develop new neurons. That's, they never knew that years ago. In other words, they now they know the brain has a certain level of what they call plasticity, meaning the ability to kind of renew itself to a certain extent. And you know, when you when you uh, when you use your brain, when you stimulate it, 
you know, let's say you've lost a certain amount of neurons or brain cells in a certain area, you stimulate what they call dendritic outgrowths, which bypass the bad neurons and interact with the live neurons. So you, you, the, it equals that you haven't lost anything. In other words, your brain, it's kind of like a self-repair of the brain. So, but it only happens if you use it. If you don't use your brain, this doesn't happen and the brain just goes right down. Coming back to the, 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 the conversation we had, so I guess you lose muscle if you don't use it. Yes. Use it. What's the difference between building a sort of a muscle base when you're younger, like in your 20s, and not having that and suddenly starting when you're 40s? Because I, I certainly know for myself, I can yeah. quickly pick things back up again. Right. In my 40s and 50s, yeah. I, I've been, I was working out since I was a, you know, 15. So yeah. you, you can pick it back up where friends that have never done that, they, they've got, they seem to have a lot of work to do. So right. I, if you start when you're younger, are you laying the foundations that is easier to build yeah. back on again? Or is it just a psychological thing that you think you're doing it, but you're not really? No, no there's a scientific basis to it. It has to do with what they call myonuclei, which are related to satellite cells. Satellite cells work, one of the reasons why they help build muscle is they contribute what they call myonuclei. Muscles are multinucleated, whereas normal cells only have one nucleus, your muscles have several. And they call that uh, something about the domain, I can't remember the exact term. But the point being that when you work out, you stimulate the development of new myonuclei. Now, if you don't work out, you mentioned about not working out what happens, the muscles will atrophy, but the, uh, you know, they will shrink. Uh, the satellite cells go quiescent, but the myonuclei that you previously developed from exercise remains. Hmm. This is called muscle memory. This is an old term, muscle. <laughs> Everybody uses the term muscle memory because they notice that you know you could lay off for a while if you've been working out, and you come back and you, and you gain the muscle back. And they termed it muscle memory, but nobody knew the basis for it. But then they found it was this myonuclei. In other words, you you get this myonuclei, additional myonuclei which as soon as you start working again, it's like you wake them up. And it's like, wake, and as, as they wake up, the satellite cells wake up and boom, there you're right back again. So yes, you know, starting earlier. Is now, a good thing yeah, to, to exa- Yeah, but whereas the person, let's say you, you use the example you used earlier, person who starts 40, 50, he hasn't developed those myonuclei. And if he hasn't worked out all his life and he starts at, let's say 50, he probably already has a, uh, a, a certain level of satellite cell degeneration, which is going to make it harder for them. To, this is why it's harder to develop muscle as you get older, because the satellite cells are not quite as active. In other words, they, if you continue to engage in resistance exercise, you'll go a long way towards maintaining satellite cells, which is very important for maintaining muscle, but there's still a certain amount of inevitable loss that prevents, let's say, a 80-year-old guy <laughs> or let's say, uh, that's too much, 70-year-old guy from looking like a 25-year-old champion, but you can't get that, you know, even if you're the same person, you can't get that same, Frank Zane at 80 mm-hmm. cannot go back to the way he looked at Mr. Olympia because of these changes in the muscle. He could stay in good condition for his age, maintain a, a good amount of muscle if he continues, and I know Frank does it, continues to engage in resistance training, but and same with Arnold and all these other guys. You can't get that same look again because, again, there's a certain amount of loss mm-hmm. inevitable. But if you've never worked out and you start at, let's say, 55, the degeneration of the satellite cells has already occurred. Doesn't mean you can't put on muscle. It's going to be just much more difficult than a guy who was previously worked out, like the example you used. Mm-hmm.